Hello, my name's Christopher Lee. Uh, I'm the PI of the Circle Research Translation Fellowship. Uh, and this video is just a, a brief introduction to the Circle project, which is a collaboration between the uh, Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, or DEFRA, the Land, Environment, Economics and Policy Institute, otherwise known as LEAP, at the University of Exeter, and the Invarsis project, which is also funded under the Landscape Decisions Programme. The CIRCLE project has uh, two overarching aims. The first is to help DEFRA design its emerging agri-environment policy using land use modelling and decision techniques that have been developed under the Landscape Decisions Programme and in particular under advances. And in particular it's going to focus on permanent land use changes that DEFRA want to fund to deliver a range of environmental benefits and look at what configurations of land use change DEFRA might want to aim for to deliver some certainty in the levels of environmental benefits that these land use changes will ultimately provide when they come to fruition in 20, 30 or even 40 years time. And the second part of the project is going to investigate how we can use these techniques in future to support the design and implementation of other land use change projects, particularly in local or regional decision making, rather than just at the national scale, which uh, the DEFRA work focuses on. Uh, the bulk of the CIRCLE project concerns the first of those aims, uh, design of DEFRA's new environmental land management policy, or ELM for short. ELM is going to be National Agri-Environment Policy for England, which is going to redirect existing agricultural subsidies, which amount to about £3 billion a year in total, £2 billion a year of which is, is currently paid on a, an area farmed basis. And it's going to redirect them into uh, what DEFRA call public money for public goods. And the aim is to pay land managers to provide environmental benefits like clean water and carbon capture, flood mitigation and so on. And in doing so, contribute to attainment of the government's environmental targets, which are set out in the 25 year environment plan and elsewhere. And these include things like uh, net zero carbon emissions by 2050, creation and restoration of half a million hectares of wildlife rich habitat, um, improving water quality and quantity and so on. And so ultimately this policy is going to radically change how our rural landscape looks and what it does for potentially centuries to come. But to um, achieve these aims, Part of the ELM scheme is going to incentivise farmers to permanently convert agricultural land to other uses. Things like uh, woodland, wetland, salt marsh, restoring peatland and so on. The challenge here though is that whilst the benefits of these changes can take decades to come about, the, decision, uh, the decisions about um, how they're going to be incentivised uh, and what changes DEFRA um, is going to be aiming for need to be made now. So DEFRA's got to answer um, a couple of key questions to, to design this ELM policy. Uh, for example, where should land use change happen? How should it be encouraged? Uh, what are its wider impacts likely to be? Uh, and how can they potentially mitigate some of those impacts with policy design? Um, an important source of information to answer those questions comes from land use change models which can predict uh, the impacts on the environment and the benefits provided to society of different policy designs. Uh, but the reality of land use modelling though is that predictions come with uncertainties arising from things like model inaccuracy, um, inherent uncertainty in the future, things like the future climate, what food prices might do. And for a policy like ELM, which is going to fund widespread changes across a landscape, uh, which is going to have long-term consequences decades into the future, um, DEFRA really need to get a handle on these uncertainties to um, ensure that the desired outcomes, the outcomes they're trying to get from these land use changes are actually delivered. Uh, so um, working with DEFRA's ELM design team, this research translation fellowship is going to apply uh, land use modelling techniques that have been generated under the Landscape Decisions Programme, and as I said in particular those from the Advances Project, and apply them in uh, LEAP's Natural Environment Valuation Modelling Suite 
to establish what the potential impact of, the, of key uncertainties uh, might be on ELM policy out. Why should we worry about uncertainty? Um, to try and illustrate that, um, can, if we consider a hypothetical uh, tree planting scheme to try and sequester carbon, um, I've shown uh, 16 potential sites on each of these each of these squares here, um, where each square is a different potential site where you might want to plant trees. And where decision makers are seeking to pursue this sort of landscape scale land use change, they have to rely on selecting a portfolio of sites. And traditionally, uh, a decision maker doing this um, would have sought sites perhaps in different parts of a region or a country. And then they'd have selected a tree species that, that maximise the carbon sequestration at each of those sites. And on my blue squares here, um, the, the potential benefits are shown by the number. So here a decision maker has tried to maximise their expected benefits by picking all the really high value squares. And distributing assets across a wide geographical area like this feels sensible, because, uh, particularly if you can plant different tree species on different sites, because it feels as though the decision maker is avoiding homogeneity and hence the chance that a single event is going to come along uh, that wipes out their whole crop and leaves them, leaves them with no carbon sequestration at all. Um, but actually, this traditional approach to diversification often has some of the highest risks attached to it, because Although the decision makers spread their risk across different areas and species, um, they've still picked the sites that perform in a similar way, that, that give you the maximum, maximum expected benefits under your expected future. If you um, find yourself in a, a scenario that you weren't expecting, say the climate change doesn't happen in exactly the way that you thought, it's probably going to affect all of these sites that you've selected in a similar way. And if you've picked the best tree species for your expected climate, there's a fair chance um, that in, in, in these unexpected scenarios, um, the, the carbon that you're going to sequester is going to be lower than you expect at all of these sites. And so if we think about the expected benefits um, from this scheme, um, although we've got an ex th th these expected benefits shown by this, this dashed line, actually we find that there's enormous variability with this approach. There's actually a high risk that you might have very poor outcomes. The alternative then is uh, to pick a, a range of sites to try and reduce this variability in outcomes. So you pick some sites that will do well under your expected climate, some sites that would do well um, under other climates, to com continue with the example. And although you're trading some of this expected benefits, your expected benefit is lower, what you're gaining is much, um, much lower variability. And if you're um, a policymaker who's worried about the worst possible outcome because you want to, say, guarantee some uh, basic level of carbon sequestration, then actually you find that this portfolio B is a much better bet for you because um, the, the chances of a really, really poor outcome are much lower than they would have been um, under portfolio A, where you're just looking at your, um, what, what you expect is going to happen. And this trade-off between the levels of benefits and security of outcomes um, isn't an either-or decision. Uh, to, to use the economic terminology, there's a Pareto frontier of land use in configurations to pick from, running from low level of benefits with high degree of certainty, all the way up to high benefits, uh, high level of benefits with high variability. And which one of those a decision maker wants to choose is uh, essentially a political decision. Um, and actually, so is the type of measure of risk that they want to use. There, there are lots of different techniques that can be used depending on whether you're trying to guard against, for example, the worst possible scenarios or whether you're trying to get consistency in outcomes across different scenarios. So the first aim of this project then um, is to provide a decision making capability or this decision making capability to DEFRA, uh, which ultimately will help them decide where different land use interventions need to be targeted to get the best value from these contracts that they're going to enter with farmers. Um, but, but it's also worth saying that the tree planting example I've talked about here focuses on just one type of land use change. DEFRA scheme is going to fund uh, multiple types of land use change across hundreds of thousands of farms in England. So 
That balancing act extends to multiple risks and returns and also concerns the mechanisms that they want to use to incentivise farmers to take part in the scheme. Um, so the evidence that this project is going to contribute, you know, taking those techniques from advances that, that deal with these uncertainties and, and using them, applying them to DEFRA's policies, is going to be uh, quite an important part of the, the policy design process for DEFRA. Um, so for the duration of the fellowship, I'm going to be embedded um, within DEFRA's ELM design team, uh, helping them make these decisions. And so for the Landscape Decisions Programme, we're going to get a really good insight into what decision makers are considering when they're designing policy, how they balance this trade-off between risk and return, you know, what their preferred measures of risk are, and how does that affect potential outcomes and so on. And crucially, it's going to tell us how our science and the evidence it generates uh, fits in with the wider decision-making process. And of course, the challenges I've outlined here aren't unique to DEFRA, of course, they're faced by land managers and decision makers everywhere. Um, so I'm also going to be looking at how we can take these models and techniques and, and begin applying them at regional and local scales too, and talking to decision makers in those areas to uh, begin to understand their needs and requirements. Um, so I hope that combined with the insights from uh, the work with DEFRA, this fellowship is going to help us um, identify where these decision, this decision making capability that we're building as a community is going to go over the next few years uh, and where and how um, we're going to be able to apply it as well. Uh, hopefully that gives you a feel for what the project is about and some of the work that I'll be undertaking and where it's heading. Uh, I've included my email address here and if you want more details on the project or you're working on something that you think might be a good fit for the approaches I've described or if you've in indeed got a land use change project that you think might benefit from the application of these techniques then please do get in touch. I'd be very inter interested to uh, discuss things further and uh, thank you for listening.